Hi there. The accelerating integration of the Greater Bay Area, which includes uh, two political systems and three different legal currency and custom systems, uh, heralds a tremendous potential. Further reforms and opening up in the mainland will strengthen interconnection between the mainland and Hong Kong. However, global market turbulence, trade protections and China-US trade frictions are adding pressure to the international relations and markets. So, how may Hong Kong develop in the Greater Bay Area? What do ongoing China-US trade frictions mean for the interconnection in this area? And what will further reforms in the Chinese mainland offer the global economy? To discuss uh, these and other issues, I'm very happy to sit down and talk to Dr. Jonathan Kun Sham Chai, who is the chairman of JP Group. That's our topic. This is Dialogue. I'm Yang Ray. Welcome to Dialogue, Jonathan. The trade relationship between the United States and China has been brought to a new low, mm -hmm. plummeted to a new low with the retaliations in kind from both sides. What's going to happen to Hong Kong in terms of your uh, stock markets and the financial center, uh, uh, center, financial center for uh, Northeast Asia? Actually, today's date that uh, China and the U.S. just started so-called trade war. And actually, we have to understand that it is not only between China and U.S. It's U.S. against the whole world. You know, we can see that besides China, Europe, Russia, Canada, they're doing the same thing and they don't retaliate at the same time. Therefore, Hong Kong uh, is part of China, but it is under one country, two system. We are part of China and at the same time, we are just New York and London. Therefore, our stock market will be affected because you know that our stock market is uh, related or uh, linked up with uh, the, the, the uh, Western world at the same time. On the China-U.S. trade conflict, there has been a long time issue, trade volume calculation, right? Now, the intermediary trade through Hong Kong was also brought into consideration. What does this trade war mean for Hong Kong and the mainland economy? How do entrepreneurs in Hong Kong view this uh, trade standoff? At the moment, actually, when the We're talking about the trade deficit yes, that the United understand. States allegedly suffers. Yes, I understand. Actually, when the, uh, uh, actually uh, uh, two months ago, when they just start about taxing on the uh, uh, steel and aluminum on even Hong Kong product, actually, Hong Kong, we are not very happy about that because we are the freest economy in the world. We are free port. We did nothing uh, uh, on, on the trade war. And uh, actually, for the uh, 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 aluminum and the uh, steel, the total amount that we export to U.S. is very minimal, but they tax on us. And I was told that that only company was the Californian company. Mm -hmm. That was just very, very interesting. Actually, uh, doing, they are doing uh, all these uh, 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 tariff on Hong Kong also. We just feel that it's quite unfair for us because Hong Kong is a free port. And uh, it's only that Hong Kong is part of China, they do all at the same time. And uh, I just feel that uh, at the moment, uh, what Hong Kong has affected is not our direct export to U.S. It's our investment in China. You know, Hong Kong is the biggest investor in China. We have so many factories in the Pearl River Delta area, in the Yangtze River Delta area, and many parts of China. We, we do the processing, and of course, many of our products are shipped to U.S. Therefore, it will be affected. Therefore, hopefully, uh, it won't scale up. Hong Kong has become one of the major offshore RMB clearance centers. Now, given the strong US dollar over expectations uh, that uh, robust economic performance of the Trump administration uh, will happen uh, due to perhaps the tax reform, uh, will other financial centers uh, in, for example, the free trade zone uh, scattered throughout the country uh, catch up so that Hong Kong will probably be left marginalized in this uh, very tough competition that com comes from within. We just feel that uh, the uh, Hong Kong special uh, situation is uh, we are under one country, two system. We are under the, uh, you, uh, the traditional capitalism that will be a capitalist uh, uh, economy, and we are the freest economy in the world. And the other parts of China, including Shanghai or Shenzhen, they're still under socialist rule. 
Therefore, unless uh, renminbi can trade it freely and the uh, currency, uh, the, the, the exchange rate can be converted freely, I think it's not easy for these uh, financial centers in China can catch up with Hong Kong at the moment. Therefore, uh, there's a saying that what China need, what our country China need, Hong Kong, we can Perhaps do. Perhaps we would use uh, another wording, mainland China. China yeah, mainland, mainland China. Yes, China exactly. Mainland. Yeah. Therefore, we just feel that uh, what our country needs, Hong Kong, is our strength. That is why, under one belt, one road, Hong Kong can really perform our role to help and to benefit from uh, this uh, new initiative. You are kind of uh, proud of your free convertibility, the exchange regime, or are you ashamed of uh, the closure of the capital account on Chinese mainland? I feel a little bit confused and not sure about what you're talking about. I just feel that Hong Kong, we are, of course, we are uh, proud of uh, being uh, one of the uh, important uh, uh, SAR of our country. It's a special economic zone. And uh, we can freely uh, convert our currency and freely imprint in the, the, the our uh, currency in and out of Hong Kong freely. And you enjoy free visa with many countries. Yes, of course. That's the envy of yeah, the majority we are, of the We Chinese are always first. proud of we are the freest yeah, economy exactly in the world. Right. But at the same time, we are part of China. Therefore, we benefit. We are just like Shanghai and Beijing. Because Hong Kong is part of China, China mainland. Therefore, we benefit from, from the both uh, 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 part of the world. Is that why Carrie Lam Chang, your uh, chief executive officer of the Hong Kong SER government, uh, very confident about the future of Hong Kong, and even more confident after she took office? I think so, because uh, Ms., uh, Mrs. Lam, uh, she has been with the government for many years, for decades. She understands how to run the government. At the same time, she's also very close with uh, the so-called the grassroots uh, of uh, Hong Kong. And I just feel that uh, under her uh, rule in Hong Kong at the moment, uh, many uh, things, of course, she cannot really solve all the problems, but many of the former problems is much better than in the past. I just feel that Hong Kong, if politically is more stable, we can benefit more economically because Hong Kong is part of China. Now we have uh, Belt and Road. At the same time, we have the uh, Big Bay Area and also renminbi internationalization, Hong Kong can benefit a lot. They are the all three uh, 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 new uh, way of uh, uh, increase of our economy in the, in the future. Jonathan, you put your finger on a very interesting issue about the political, uh, political stability or the other around in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. That reminds me of two cases. One is uh, uh, some strong young candidates for the lawmaking body were disqualified and discredited because of their humiliating uh, behavior uh, in the Legislative Council. The other case being student leaders uh, in Hong Kong were sentenced to two years of imprisonment. So what do you make of the very tough, high-handed crackdown upon those who violate the One China, Two Systems principle? I just feel that Hong Kong, uh, one of our success is the rule of law in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. In Hong Kong, we just feel that no matter who they are in front of the law, they should be treated equal. No matter they are from China mainland or from the Western country or even Hong Kong young people, if they violate the law, they should be uh, penalized. Do you have the chronic problem of uh, British intervention since 1997? After all, the British presence in Hong Kong cannot be underestimated. Mm, I don't want to comment on that, but the point is, I just feel that uh, we shouldn't allow other foreign uh, forces to influence in the local politics, because Hong Kong is part of China today, and uh, we have our own way. We have confidence to solve our own problem. We don't need other party to really tell us what to do and what not to do. We appreciate the unique uh, competence and the confidence of Hong Kong, but then we go back to what happened in 1997 when the Asian financial crisis first broke out with the strong pledge of a uh, former Premier Zhu Rongji to back up Hong Kong, whatever uh, happened, no matter what. Uh, Hong Kong was able to navigate its own course out of the choppy waters of the first financial crisis. My point of the question, next one, is however, do you think we're going to have the curse of every one decade 
we're going to have a financial meltdown or, if you like, financial tsunami. 1998, 2008, this year, mm -hmm. 2018. Mm -hmm. Are you concerned with this prospect? I fully understand your question. In 1997, there was a financial crisis system in Hong Kong, the so-called Asian financial crisis. We suffered a lot. Of course, because we have got the full support from the government, from Beijing, therefore we solve it. And at that time, we still remember that. We have so got a negative in ad asset in Hong Kong because all the asset meltdown, therefore the asset is negative. Or therefore, toxic assets. Something like that. Therefore, we have a lesson. We have a big price for that. Therefore, in 2018, Hong Kong was not affected, you know, because very conservative. We understand, we learned a big lesson for that. We appreciate but, uh, your sense of humility. <laughs> but today, uh, you know, uh, 2018, the big world has changed. And, uh, and then at the moment, because we have so many friends from uh, the mainland and all over the world coming to Hong Kong to buy the property, the asset price is coming up again. Hopefully, there won't be a bubble in our economy. And we hope that there won't be another uh, financial crisis coming again in these two years. Many elites. Uh, or policymakers in the mainland instead have the strong sense of humility that we should draw inspirations from Hong Kong, the SAR region, in that, for example, how we should look at the role of the government, the visible hand uh, in reallocating uh, the market forces. Mm -hmm. So um, this is a one major argument that the Trump administration put forward regarding the 2025 vision of Made in China. They say the government should play the second fiddler instead mm -hmm. of uh, pouring all its resources in the pursuit of a high technology. And the United States is concerned that they will be, uh, uh, you know, be left marginalized. They will lose the leadership. What do you think of the relationship be between the market and the government? I just feel that different country have the different way of administration. You know, uh, in China, we have the so-called uh, Chinese um, uh, way of uh, market economy, while in the Western world, including Hong Kong, is free economy. Free economy means that uh, we just follow the market. Whatever the market goes, we follow it. But under the uh, Chinese socialist, their own way of uh, 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 market economy, the government will plan something so that they follow how to achieve the goal. We just feel that in the past 40 years, we can see that China is very successful because of their system. The growth rate Which is coming up. Which guarantees consistency of the policy executions. We know what we're doing. Partisan politics, the electoral exactly. politics, uh, which brings about more unpredictability and uncertainty. You have, uh, but then, we, but then uh, when you say, well, look, only because we are different, we should be discredited. That's ridiculous, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I but agree. But Trump says the other way around. I mean, uh, how do you see the face-off between the two sides uh, from uh, a third perspective? I just feel that uh, different countries have their own way of doing things. We shouldn't criticize other parties. For example, we respect what U.S. is doing because we have been in the Western world for a long time. We respect what they are doing. We understand what U.K. is doing. But at the same time, we also respect and we also fully confirm that the way China is doing today is right because we work on the success. And it's so successful for our China. A regular contributor for Financial Times, Professor Kishu Mabubani mm -hmm. from the National University of Singapore mm -hmm. uh, says, look, the United States still lives in the 20th century and could not uh, live up to the new realities mm -hmm. uh, the new evolution of the world mm -hmm. with the rise of the Asian hemisphere. He used the concept of mm -hmm. Asian hemisphere. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and uh, Prime Minister Dr. Mahadia, mm -hmm. uh, newly elected leader of yeah. Malaysia, mm -hmm. shares much of the same Asian values uh, mm -hmm. in politics of this region. So what do you think of their efforts to safeguard the uh, uh, unique political culture in East Asia? Will, will that create more troubles and confusion instead of uh, an opportunity for the West to learn more from the mm -hmm. rising power. I just feel that for our country, we are very successful in the past 40 years. And uh, we just want to tell that is our way of doing things, and we are successful. And uh, I don't really want to comment on what U.S. is doing today. They have their own way. We understand. But uh, we have to respect each other. 
We just feel that what we are doing is right and successful. That is the reality. You have to understand that. You are watching dialogue with uh, Mr. Jonathan Choi, a senior member of CPPCC, a top advisory body of the Chinese mainland, and also an economist. We'll be back in a short while. Stay with us, please. Unless the country gets united, it won't be called a strong country. If Taiwan is like Hong Kong, you enjoy the prosperity. You got a support from our motherland. Uh, the uh, message that China delivers to the rest of the world on this special occasion, the 40th anniversary, about the future of this country. Because uh, many fear that China will become a threat, it will be uh, involved in geopolitical rivalry, it will be a zero sum game, it will be a return to the new Cold War in East Asia. I would like to use another way of the worry. They are afraid of the uprising of China today. It's not no more ideology and no more other things. It's very simple. They worry about their rights. Right, so uh, let's uh, take a further look at uh, the internal competitions between Hong Kong and your homegrown competitors in the mainland. Uh, to, with the latest release of the white paper on WTO, it's called the shorter version of uh, the negative list. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you make of the, uh, uh, the reform and the implications for the financial services and the insurance services? I just feel that uh, recently, uh, because uh, of the, uh, uh, our country's policy, President Xi Jinping has been talking about we need to open the economy and continue to open. Therefore, recently there are so many uh, new policies coming out. The percentage of the foreign uh, investment in financial services, including banking, security, insurance, is released. Of course, different of different uh, uh, classifications. And uh, for Hong Kong, we are treated to be foreign. Therefore, we are restricted, and now we benefit. And hopefully, of course, Hong Kong, we just feel that we are part of China. We should be treated the same as local. That's what I've been pushing in the past uh, one you decade. You're complaining about some of the paradoxical phenomena. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not complaining. In the relationship between Hong Kong and the mainland. Uh -huh. Because we just feel we're treated foreign. You, you, at the very beginning, 40 years ago... But I somehow, I'm joking, because uh, <laughs> I, I see your point. You are able to enjoy benefits uh, from both sides. Exactly. Uh, if you treat me like a foreigner, fine. Yeah. If you treat me like um, a, a national of the Chinese uh, uh, country or, or uh, nationality, fine. Yeah. Yes. So you're uh, flexible enough. Is that part exactly. of your resilience of Hong Kong? That is the strength of Hong Kong. Therefore, we are treated foreign, doesn't matter. But of course, we, need, we would like to have new privileges and policy that we can freely and uh, to trade and invest in China. That is what we, 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 what we request. And uh, because, you know, especially young people today in Hong Kong, it's a bit political. When they come back to our own motherland, they are not treated equal. They just feel that, oh, why I come back? Of course, our country would like or our young people of Hong Kong to come and study, to visit, to uh, work in the mainland. But we have to treat them equal. Otherwise, when they come in, oh, why my all the uh, uh, colleagues, my uh, friends are like this? But we are very different. Therefore, I just feel that uh, President Xi Jinping now is working on policy to facilitate Hong Kong young people to study, to visit, and to work in China. In the first few days of uh, Mr. Xi Jinping taking uh, his uh, public office, he raised the idea of a China dream. Now, our understanding is getting closer and closer to what he actually means. For example, mm -hmm. unless the country gets united, mm -hmm. it won't be called a strong country. You talk about a major country to a strong economy. Mm -hmm. You have to be a united country. Yes. However, Taiwan. Mm -hmm. remains a renegade province. Mm -hmm. uh, the approval rating of uh, Madam Tsai Ing-wen, leader of Taiwan, mm -hmm. dropped to a historical low and really embarrassed mm -hmm. her supporters. Yeah. 
But those DPP supporters uh, said over and over, today's Hong Kong will be the tomorrow of Taiwan to warn their supporters, look, we don't want to be part of China. Now, what, what advice would you give to our nationals in Taiwan? I just feel that if Taiwan is like Hong Kong, you enjoy the prosperity. You got the support from our motherland. Did you say that to your friends in Taiwan? Of course. What because was their first response? of all, what, what was there? Of course, maybe some of them they agree, some of them they don't agree. There are so many parties in in, in Taiwan, you know. And of course, as uh, being a Chinese, I just feel that unification is very important. Mm -hmm. We fully support. There's only one China. And for Hong Kong, under one country, two system, we just feel that we benefit. In the past, Hong Kong was a colony. We are a small place. We are just a business center, financial center. But today, when I go outside to talk, where do you come from? I come from China, Hong Kong. What is China, Hong Kong? Same as China, Shanghai, and Shanghai, uh, China, Beijing. Therefore, I'm backed up by 1.3 billion people, so I'm backed up by the whole motherland. Therefore, I feel that when I go out, people all respect me. Therefore, same as Taiwan. You know, today, uh, under the uh, new administration, what we feel that what is successful and not successful is capped by the economic performance. You know, the economy is not very good. You see, the uh, the the occupants, uh, the the, the uh, so-called the uh, uh, opportunity for the young people and the salary and all this is not really too good. Therefore, we just feel that if they don't fully integrate with the China economy, I think they will really uh, cannot get the benefit. Hong Kong, since part of China. Whatever request from the Chinese government, the central government said that, okay, if it's good for Hong Kong, good for China, they let me do it. That's why we have so-called a SIPA for so many times. Exactly. Jonathan, we don't want to generalize the problems that mm -hmm. exist uh, between Taiwan and the mainland. Mm -hmm. Let's focus on the future of a young generation okay. mm -hmm. in both places, Hong Kong and Taiwan, ranging from the Umbrella Revolution to the Mayflower, the Sunflower Movement. Mm -hmm. uh, in the island of Taiwan. And therefore, uh, we, uh, the mainland has released uh, a lot of uh, preferential policies to attract uh, uh, university graduates from uh, particularly Taiwan and uh, let them uh, get integrated with the uh, big market in the mainland. Do you think this will pay off? Mm -hmm. What does that mean for the future of the island? Uh, for the island, I really don't know what they think, you know, because I just feel that uh, the young people, they feel that they want to have so-called the freedom democracy mm -hmm. and what they want to do, they want, they, what, they, what, they, what they want to achieve. But at the end of the day, uh, I think livelihood is most important. Mm -hmm. Can they really have a good job, good opportunity, or even a good pay? For example, let me quote you some, ex some example. Uh, after the crisis in Hong Kong a few years ago, some Hong Kong young people, they say, oh, Taiwan is good. They go to work and enjoy their life in Taiwan. But the salary they got, is very much lower than Hong Kong, more than 50% of the wage in Hong Kong. And they enjoy a few years, they have nothing to do, they come back to Hong Kong, they regret. I think no matter what uh, idea they're talking about, finally, they want a better life, better opportunity. That's what uh, uh, people would like to do in the, in, in, in the long run. A further look at the economy in or market in Taiwan, there are some differences be between Hong Kong and Taiwan, because uh, there's an apparent, an apparent lack of uh, upward mobility mm -hmm. for the employment of young people in Hong Kong. In Taiwan, uh, you don't have so many uh, business tycoons in the property market, mm -hmm. uh, and therefore it might be a different scenario. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so, what do you think of the margin for upward mobility in Taiwan uh, compared with Hong Kong? Uh, which itself is undergoing profound restructuring, sort of. I think for Hong Kong itself, we need to let our Hong Kong young people to understand what is today's China, mm -hmm. what is the motherland has been, keep on changing in the past few decades. Because many of our young people, they don't really understand what our motherland is doing today. First of all, can most of them speak mm -hmm. a good Mandarin? Not good necessarily. <laughs> Not necessarily. <laughs> Some of them is the pity that they have never been in China before. Mm -hmm. They just feel that China is uh, still very backward, and uh, all this uh, all, all former history, they all in their mind, and they just feel, oh, it's no good. But after they go to China, it's different. For example, 
my son brings some of the friends from London, just graduated from Cambridge. They just come into Beijing, Shanghai, have a look. Think about, oh, uncle, is Chinese change a lot? You know, they didn't spread the Chinese like this. I think you should give the advice to mm. Peter Navarro and uh, Light Heather, the major economic advisors to President Trump. Uh, let them uh, come and take a yeah, look at seeing is believing. Guys understand. like those uh, in the White House have never been to China mm -hmm. before they wrote the book Death by China. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Because I just feel for our Chinese nationals, they have been traveling all over the world in the past. Mm -hmm. They don't understand. Now I would like to say that they travel a lot, they understand. But while the Americans, some of them they don't, don't even have passports, you know. <laughs> they have not been traveling. They don't know what is the East. They still feel some of them, they feel Hong Kong, just like fishing boat, you know? And actually, Hong Kong today is the same as New York. They, 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 they just, once they come to Hong Kong, they're very impressed. Oh, this is Hong Kong. We just feel that Hong Kong is very backward. The fishing village. I'm sorry, we are like in New York and London. This year marks the 40th anniversary of China's opening up and the reform. Most are seriously reassessing the impact of China's rise or peaceful development and internally mm -hmm. economic restructuring and the social governance, so to speak. The sense of responsibility is growing uh, in the formation of a civil society. So what do you think of uh, uh, the uh, message that China delivers to the rest of the world on this special occasion, the 40th anniversary, about the future of this country? Because uh, many fear that China will become a threat, it will be uh, involved in geopolitical rivalry, it will be a zero-sum game, it will be a return to the new Cold War in East Asia. Uh, the uh, message that China delivers to the rest of the world on this special occasion, the 40th anniversary, about the future of this country. Because uh, many fear that China will become a threat, it will be uh, involved in geopolitical rivalry, it will be a zero-sum game, it will be a return to the new Cold War in East Asia. You look uh, quite relaxed. Uh, you give us a broad smile, and uh, what, what does that mean for the future of the mainland? I just feel a full confidence of our, our country. You know, I've been the, in my country uh, during the Cultural Revolution in 1975. I was here when I was very young. Therefore, in the past 40 something years, I understand the change of our government. You see? With the evolution of the government. Yes, the evolution of the government and also. Governance. Yes, governance. Everything is changing, you know. And we just feel that our. Government, our country is moving a good path. It's a good way. It's a it's a correct way. I would but like to say. It's very different from Western it's institutions. Very, very different. We are demonized. We are vilified. We are we are bad in their uh, perspective. <laughs> because in the past, I I, I remember that uh, the Western world criticized it uh -huh. because of we are communist. But today, they don't criticize in such a way. They criticize us for so-called national. Uh, capitalism. Come they on. criticize. Come on. They pull out. Uh, <laughs> the United States put out uh, from uh, the UN uh, Human Rights Commission. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and also, they, uh, I would like to use another way: is they worry, they are afraid of the uprising of China today. It's not no more ideology and no more other things. It's very simple. They worry about your rights. The big brother, of course, is quite unwilling to slide into a second position to give up the center stage of the world leadership. I really appreciate your analysis, and, uh, which is based on the confidence of Hong Kong and mm -hmm. the resilience of the Hong Kong economy. Yes. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.